Hi everyone, Lauren Gates here from Syngoma Technologies with another open source Pro Tips video. Today's video is a continuation of our experiment using Node-RED and Free PBX. If you haven't seen the Node-RED video for part one, I recommend you do that now. In part one, we learned what Node-RED was, we learned how to install the asterisk AMI package in Node-RED, and we learned how to create an asterisk AMI user in free PBX, connect the two systems together. We also learned how to send commands to the free PBX from Node-RED, and we learned a little bit about debug. So we're going to build on that configuration now. If we click over to my Node-RED tab here, we'll see the configuration as it existed prior to the end of our previous video. Let's take our debug node and move it over to the output side of the asterisk AMI connection in node red. The blue dot indicates undeployed changes, so we click the deploy button now. Debug output shows up here on the right on the little debug screen, which you can activate quickly by clicking the, bug, uh, the button that looks like a bug. If I bring up my SIP client for 6002, and I very quickly dial star 43, and hang up. Minimize that. Let's disable the debug so we don't see any more scrolling by. Expand this window a little bit. What I just did is probably the simplest thing that one can do in free PBX when you initiate a call. It was a single channel call to the echo test uh, and then an immediate hang up. And that one action generated about a dozen or more AMI events. But we're actually filtering these. If you recall from part one, when we configured our asterisk management user, we only configured it to allow access to the call events and originate. So these are only the call events associated with that one action. There may well be many, many other AMI events that are filtered out in order to keep this tutorial as simple as possible, and it's still nearly unmanageable. If you are on a busy system, the AMI stream is just a continuous stream of events that is difficult to deal with. So the first thing we need to do is filter this down to something that is manageable. And we'll do that by adding a few switch nodes. In order to configure a switch node for what we want to see, we need to have an idea of what events we are filtering for. So we can just quickly go through the events here. We'll see that there's a new channel event, a new state event, device state change, extension status, new connected line. Ooh, extension status, that's interesting. AMI event extension status for extend 6002 shows us that it changed in use. Well, that's nice to know. I bet there is a corresponding extension status at the end of the call when it changed back to idle when I hung up and there it is. So let us, for the sake of our purposes today, filter for all events of type extension status. If we drag out a switch node here and we wire it up to the output from the AMI, we can configure this with a name, which is arbitrary. If we go payload.event, and that is, we can copy and paste from here. It's case sensitive, so I want to get that correct. We hit done. And Let's move our debug node down to the output side of this extension status, enable it, and deploy those changes. Clear the debug window, bring up our SIP client, very quickly make a call. You are about to end. And hang up. Now, all those events were filtered down into just two, just the extension status events. We got a notification in real time from the PBX when extension 6002 was in use, 
and then I want to change back to idle. I wonder what it will look like if I bring a second phone into the mix, which I just happen to have here as a hard phone beside me. So if I bring these two phones up side by side and I dial 6003 from my soft client, maybe you can hear it ringing. I answer the call, I hang up the phone. Minimize those out of the way. Here we see all the statuses coming in in real time. First extension 6002 was in use as I dialed. Then 6003 started ringing. 600, there's an extension status associated with a BLF hit, or actually it's a phone absent. We'll ignore that for now. There's an extension status 6003 is in use as I answered the far end. And then we'll see corresponding idles once I hung up. 6003 idle, uh, the hint, and 6002 idle. We can use additional change nodes to do some further filtering. So let us filter all the output. Click to grid as being uncooperative. We'll just leave it. This one is going to be 6003. And when I have an extension status of extend, E-X-T-E-N in order to match this one. So I type payload.extend 6003. Done. I've reversed these. That's all right. Name 6002. Payload E-X-T-E-N 6002. Done. And I can move my debug node to the output side of here those changes, clear that config, bring up 6002. Now, only 6002 events show up in this uh, debug window. Of course, that was not a great example. I should have called the other device. 6002. So if I dial 6002 for my hard phone, we see a ringing event here. That call. It's now, it's now use. I hang up that call back to idle, but we're only seeing events for 6002 because that's what this change node is filtering for. Let's add a second debug to the mix. We debug the output from this one, 6003. Change the names of our nodes, clear the output, deploy the changes, bring up my two phones side by side, 6003, call, answer, hang up. Here's a neat thing you can do. It's conventional to have many debug nodes, some of which are enabled, some of which are disabled. In this case, we have two, both enabled, so we're getting events for both streamed to the debug output here on the right. We can filter for which debug nodes are displayed in the output. Right now, I'm seeing all nodes, but if I wanted to clear all those nodes and only show 6002, I can do that with this. Here, node 6002, node 6002. There's the in use and the idle. I can also clear the 6002 events and show 6003 events and only show those uh, events that are streamed to that one debug node. Or I can flip back to all nodes and get both of them mixed in together. So that's neat. So as exciting as it is to monitor AMI events in text format in Node Red, this is not the end goal of our video here today. Our video is to trigger actions based on these events in real time. And there's lots of actions we can do. 
But the simplest one to demonstrate in the video format that we have here is to add some dashboard items. So let's do that now. Let's get these debug nodes out of the way. Let's just put them over here for now. And let us put in a change node, which we're familiar with from part one. I'm going to put in two change nodes here, and I am going to call this one 6003. And in this change node, I am going to set the message payload to message payload status. No, oh, is it lowercase or uppercase? find out here. Extension status. It is status is actually the numeric value. I want status text as we can see here. So I want to feed the status text for the AMI event solely as the payload for this node. And I am going to do the same thing with this one. This one is 6002. I'm going to go message payloads. Uh, message payload is now set to message payload status text. Done. We'll wire those up. Wire those up. And let's just look at the debug from one deploy those changes and it gives us a little warning that we have unused configuration nodes and that is due to this little guy over here on the left floating off and unconnected to anything. We're not particularly concerned about that. So let's watch the debug as it leaves this change node that we've labeled 6002 when I dial star 43. 6002 extension. You are about. So now the payload simpli is simplified to just one single word in use and idle. And that's all we have. We have a corresponding one for 6003. Now, if we take that payload and we direct it to a dashboard item. First, I want to check Manage Palette, Install Dashboard. If it's not installed, you can install it here, Node Red Dashboard. I've already installed this package in Node Red, but it's probably not installed by default on your system, so you can do that here. And we saw how to install packages in the previous video. Once that package is installed, you can scroll to the bottom and you will see lots of dashboard items, which allows you to create very elaborate dashboards. I'm not really familiar with any of these, so I am going to pick one at random that I know will accomplish our purposes. I'm going to drop two text items over here. Let's label those. So this one, remember is 6003 so we're going that's the label in the dashboard 6003 is the label of the node and we are going to display the message payload there's other options there we can configure out but for proof of concept that's all we're concerned about for now done let's wire those together and let's deploy those changes. With the dash dashboard package installed, we have an additional debug button here over on the far right of this list, which gives us our dashboard options. And there's lots of configuration options here as well that we're not going to go into, but there's a little button here that we can click that will launch a new tab and show us our dashboard. So with our very simple dashboard set up here, let's bring up our SIP clients again now. We have 
my hard phone here on the right of the screen, my soft client on the left. I'm going to call from one to the other. 6003. Call. Change the status of one to change the in use. The other is ringing. I can answer. Both are in use. Hang up. Both are idle. We are streaming real time events from extensions on the system to a dashboard in Node Red. And we've done it with about 10 minutes of graphical programming. And that's all for today's video. We have in part one learned how to set up a free BBX connection from Node Red to free BBX send commands through the AMI to the PBX. In part two, we learned how to receive incoming events from the free PBX, monitor and filter those events, and perform actions based on the content of those events. Um, the examples shown are really quite simple and really proof of concept, but the sky's the limit from here. There's nodes for many many different services, packages. You can do things as trivial as sending a tweet every time your phone rings to, um, you know, very important things, uh, activating uh, lights, occupancy sensors for home automation, um, really whatever you can dream up, you can probably wire it up in Node Red. Word of caution, which I should have mentioned in part one as well, but I'll do it here. And that is that using the asterisk AMI connection uh, for this is not something that scales to enormous numbers. So I'm um, thinking particularly of a click to dial application where it was common to configure browser extensions to connect to the asterisk AMI directly from a remote browser so that you could trigger click to call or something like that in order to control a desktop phone. Um, we've seen cases where the number of users goes up, the number of AMI the separate AMI connections goes up and then it becomes particularly difficult to manage those. So uh, be very careful about uh, anything more than a small number of AMI connections on a production system. And of course, when you're launching on new events and uh, new adventures of this type, it's best to start in a sandbox where the system is very quiet as we were working with here today. It's very difficult to monitor AMI events, even on a lightly loaded production system you know, with, any, uh, with, with any efficiency. So I'll leave things there for today. If anyone uh, puts these techniques to use and wants to ask questions or show off the results, community.freepbx.org is a great place to uh, ask for advice and to demonstrate what you're doing with FreePBX. I uh, look forward to uh, seeing everyone post their Node Red flows and videos to there. That's it for today, everyone. Bye.